Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar today. I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to set marketing goals and the, the components and pieces that go into marketing goals. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen so we can kick things off here. And why do I have two PowerPoint windows open? That's weird. Do this one. Is that working for everybody? Can you see my screen? I know your cameras are off, but maybe throw something in the chat so I can so I know whether or not you can see the. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks, Anna. Okay. Have you, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tara Ingalls. I am owner of Tingles Graphic Design, and if you're here to learn a little bit about marketing goals, you're in the right place. Um, so first things first, for those of you who I don't know, or I haven't met in the past, I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about me and my background and the company, um, in which, uh, I own. So Tingles Graphic Design is a website and graphic design firm. We've been around since 2000, so 24 years. Uh, one of the things we're well known for is our five-day turnaround. We work with a lot of startups, nonprofits, um, small businesses, and a lot of our work has been done right here in Dane County, um, Madison, Wisconsin area. But we do, thanks to the silver lining of Zoom from COVID, do work all over the United States now. So we've kind of just hit a benchmark of 1,400 clients, which was really exciting last month. Um, we help our clients with everything from logo design, starting their business, branding. Uh, we do some custom illustration, package design, brochures, website design. And then what you're here today is my coaching and speaking circuit that I do. So there's a couple different reasons for setting marketing goals. I'm going to give you just four here. Um, so the first one is definitely going to be to get alignment for the company to be a, on a common goal for everybody to kind of be striving for the same thing with this company. It's really great to share your goals with not only your leadership team, but also the employees that work for your company. It's also great to get your great input from them when it comes to setting your marketing goals, because you never know who's got a great idea or pain or wanting to increase certain aspects of the business um, that might have great insight on that. So team alignment, um, Let's see here. Um, allowing you to measure your return on investment. So if you don't have a goal, you aren't going to really know whether or not your marketing is actually bringing in business or bringing revenue into the company. So without setting these goals, you really won't know whether you're making money based on your efforts. The third is to hold, if you're using an outside marketing team or you have an internal marketing team, basically to hold them accountable. Are you doing what you say you're going to do? Are you hitting the goals that you've set for yourself? So when everybody's on the same page and you're all steering the ship in the same direction, it's great to be able to have that accountability. And then setting marketing goals will save you time, money, and resources. And I can't stress this enough that when it comes to time, even if a marketing avenue is free, it's still going to be your time to manage and be on that marketing uh, platform uh, that you have to take into consideration. So, so jumping right in, how many of you have said, I don't know where to start. I've started my business. I have a really great idea for a business, but I would have absolutely no idea where to go with my marketing. There's just way too many options is often what I hear. Uh, I don't know if my marketing money is even working. I'm spending all of this money on Facebook. I'm spending money on uh, direct mail, but I can't really tell whether it's driving traffic to my website or whether I'm actually getting leads from my marketing dollars. Or my favorite is, I can't figure it out. So the reason that you're overwhelmed is because there's just too many options. So I know this screen is small and you probably can't even read everything if you're on like a laptop, but that's meant to overwhelm you in a way to show you that there's lots of different options out there and that you're not alone in trying to make sense of where you should be marketing your business. And we're going to come back to this slide a little bit later. But yeah, there's too many options and that's why you're here. So there's multiple different ways to be breaking down goals. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I know that um, uh, if you're on the call today, I will be sending you a video recording of this and the slide deck. So you don't necessarily have to just be scrambling on writing notes. I want you to be able to kind of sit back, pay attention, be present, and kind of have a good understanding of, of what I'm talking about so that you can ask any questions that you have on the fly. Um, or, it, you know, if you want to come back to a slide, you can kind of notate where you are. So 
uh, the first thing that you need to do, and there's there's kind of a, a couple different steps. There's basically uh, six different steps to creating a um, a really solid marketing strategy. Um, and the first is like, what do you want to do? Do you want to increase brand awareness? Do you want to generate high quality leads? Um, are you wanting to acquire new customers, re-engage existing customers? increase web traffic. So, and if your answer is all to above, you're also not alone in that as well, right? We all want to get more business, get more people in the door, make more money, right? But it's very difficult to have a giant goal of, I want to increase my business by 50% this year and not have any strategy behind that on how you're actually going to achieve that or whether you're going to know whether your efforts were fruitful. So the first thing you need to do is to like choose your strategy and like what you're trying to accomplish. The second is we're going to build a campaign. So the who, what, you know, there's like who, what, when, where, why. We're going to do who, what, who, where, when, and how in this presentation. So I'm going to break each one of these down so that you have a really good idea of the components that go into this goal. So the first is, is what? What are you trying to increase in your business? What are you trying to decrease? What are you trying to increase more exposure on? Maybe you have a new product or service and you're trying to identify, get more people to buy this product or service than either our existing clients or new clients. So identifying one product or service instead of, I want to increase my business by 50%. Let's say you own a landscaping company and you want to increase your lawn mowing and lawn maintenance program. Let's pick that one product or product or service. And then we're going to put some other information behind it. So instead of saying, I want to increase my business, like by, you know, whatever, let's pick one service. So go ahead and write down a service that you're trying to increase or decrease in your company. The next, the next is, is who is the target audience on this product or service? So the next slide is kind of going to show you, these are all the different things that go into creating a really solid target audience. And most of the time people don't realize that you have multiple, like Tingle says seven, seven different target audiences that we do, that we try to reach in our marketing. And they're not, and some of them aren't even businesses. Some are nonprofits. Some are strategic partners that we've developed over the years and trying to get connections built with companies that marketing is not just bringing in business. It could be bringing in um, strategic, uh, strategic marketing because all of these also be trying to fill employees that you're trying to, uh, to trying to fill. So that could be a marketing goal is trying to put a uh, fill a seat on the bus. Um, so think that could also be a target audience. So, and oftentimes when you're setting a target audience, you forget that it's not just their age, their, their gender, their occupation, um, their income level, household size, whatever, those kinds of things. And not only with location, but it's where they work, where they live and where they play, but the psychographics go behind those target audiences. What do they care about? What do they value? You know, breaking your company. Do they want speed? Do they want the cheapest on the market? Do they want, um, uh, you know, something that's that's fulfilling a pain that no one even knows is, is uh, you know, has a solution to? So is it, you know, an awareness kind of thing? So, uh, you know, what problem are you trying to solve for them? So if you create these target audiences, you know, I would encourage you to write down all of these things about each target audience. Um, that you have for your business, because in the end, I will share with you, it is a lot easier to market to a smaller segment than everyone in the US, right? Because that's really difficult and it's very expensive and no one can afford that. So um, I'm going to give you two examples and I'm just going to read to you. Um, these are two projects that I've worked on for two different clients. And I just want to show you how uh, I'm going to read to you a little bit about this. So these are kind of the demographic information. So this is Chloe for St. Vincent de Paul. She's a fashion shopper. She's female. She's 33. She doesn't have any kids. She's a young professional. Uh, she makes 55K annual income and she lives in downtown Madison. But here is her psychographic or kind of a little bit taking her persona into one step further. Chloe values style, fashion, sustainability, pricing, and giving back to her community. She en enjoys social media, do-it-yourself home, um, home improvement, exercise. She loves trendy bars and restaurants. She attends concerts at the Sylvie. She is an outdoorsy kind of person, and she is a plant mom. Uh, she also shops online. She loves a store called ThreadUp, Poshmark, 
Depop and other thrift stores. Um, she loves to go down State Street and look at boutiques. She eats at trendy spots, new places like um, new restaurants. She drinks from Starbucks. Um, she reads email newsletters, fiction, book clubs, celebrity biographies, um, and she listens to podcasts. She's also a Tw Taylor Swifty fan um, and loves indie music. And she typically buys vintage name brand co clothing, one of a kind things, accessories. She loves St. Denny's for their affordable and unique styles, designer items, and the thrill of the find. And she loves it that her efforts spending money in these stores um, go back into her community. So it gives you a really well-rounded idea of who Chloe is, how to replicate her, and how to get more Chloe's into the store, right? So you're not just saying, I just want females that are between, like I sometimes I'll ask people who their target audience is and they'll say, um, I worked with a woman who did skincare and she said, I work with women. Well, do you work with 15 year olds on you know, blemish reduction, or do you work with 70 year old women trying to reduce wrinkles or whatever? So it's like, just because it, you work with females identifying, and you might have different skincare lines specifically for those target markets, but making them all lump into one target market, it's not helping you develop really strong marketing tactics to reach that person. I'm going to give you one more. Um, so this is Devin. Devin has a dad bod. So dad bod has been uh, identified by this client as as a target audience. Um, they're looking for males, 33, year old, 33 years old. They have two kids, 75K annual income. Uh, maybe he's a CPA and, and, he, and he lives in uh, work in, in Fitchburg, but he lives in Oregon. So I2 Fitness is a gym. Um, it's a small private gym. And um, uh, so this is some of the psychographics uh, that they identified. So Devin is a CPA and accounting firm in Fitchburg. He's married with two kids under 10, et cetera. He used to be really fit and healthy, he used to run several times a week, and he even had a membership at a local gym. But since having kids, he hasn't been able to prioritize his own health because he's running them all around, right? And as a result, he has gained some unwanted pounds and is sporting that not so awesome dad bod. On the weekends, he spends time with his family. Sometimes he golfs with his friends and he's a volunteer coach for his son's soccer team. He subscribes to Men's Health Magazine and reads the occasional self-help book. He's super into the latest tech and shops regularly at Best Buy. He checks Amazon religiously for the daily deal and buys in bulk at Costco to save his family money. At night, you can often find him scrolling on Facebook Marketplace before looking for his next greatest find. And he follows several motivational speakers and local sports teams on Instagram. So it kind of tells you a little bit about where he hangs out, where he's physically located, um, what his hobbies and interests are. And the reason that you go into some of these psychographic details is because would you try to reach Devin at some place like St. Vincent? Maybe, maybe he's a thrift shopper, but you haven't identified him as being somebody that that is a thrift shopper, right? So he maybe he buys his clothes on Amazon or, you know, those kinds of things. So determining and, and likewise, would you try to uh, target Chloe who doesn't have children, maybe by doing targeted Facebook advertising, would you try to reach somebody who is part of mom's groups or part of soccer clubs or the local high school, things like that. So it kind of helps you not only identify where you should be marketing, but also where you should not be marketing these individuals. So if you're not already identifying target audience personas, I would definitely um, encourage you to, to take some time to do that. So the next thing on the list is where, right? So now that you've kind of identified um, what you want to market, who you want to market to, where are you know, where are these folks? And again, we've kind of talked a little bit about some of the hobbies and interests that these people have. So you might be already identifying where you should be marketing for these people. But going back to your original goal, I want to show you some examples of going back to that original slide that was overwhelming, how you might reach these target audiences based on all of the different myriad of options that you would that you would have to market your business. So let's say you're trying to increase brand awareness. So going back to like the Chloe example where you're trying to reach her, maybe you're doing, um, you know, trying to differ create differentiation on how, how uh, St. Vincent de Paul is really changing the community and how shopping at the thrift stores can really, you know, help pay back the uh, payback and support the community. So, you know, identifying um, social media platforms that Chloe might be on and putting content out there 
creating a really strong website that she might be interested in going and, and taking a look at. I know St. Vincent specifically because I'm a shopper there um, has like um, specific things like they'll bring in trunk shows that have name brand clothing and things like that. So how do we get that particular message out to Chloe um, and, and get her interested in that? Sales leave behinds, like flyers, things like that. So, you know, these are the different things that I would recommend that a company does when it comes to increasing brand awareness. Different, differently, you know, maybe it's an established business that has a website and they're just trying to get more traffic, right? So these are the different strategies that I would recommend that they spend their time and money on to get more website leads. And then the, the third might be, oh, I really want to become an authoritative figure when it comes to um, green landscaping or um, insurance and, and alternate insurance uh, opportunities for small business. These are the areas where I would recommend that you spend your marketing dollars or your time and energy, webinars, podcasting, blogging, doing networking, building strategic partnerships where people can refer you to come in and speak to their client base, et cetera. So when it comes to working with a marketing coach like me or working with marketing companies, they should be bringing this, you know, to you and saying, okay, these based on your goals of who you're trying to market, what you're trying to do, and based on um, the, the, the actual goal you're trying to achieve, here's where I think you should be spending that time and money. But there's two other things that we need to talk about. We also need to talk about when. So when are you going to be starting this campaign? And when are you going to be ending this campaign? I, I really recommend that you only do monthly goals or quarterly goals at the farthest out. You don't want to be spending $150 a month on a Facebook ad campaign only to realize that 90 days later, you weren't getting any traffic to your website, right? You would want to know that information maybe weekly to know whether or not the campaign is working so that you can cancel it, tweak it, and restart it. So having the campaign start and end will also help you identify whether or not the the dollars that you're spending on this is actually bringing in the leads. And so um, having a start date and an end, time, end date is really important. How is a two part, how much will it cost? And then how are you gonna measure success? So, and don't forget that your time is an extent. So everybody has a dollar figure hourly rate, whether you're a salesperson or an active employee in your company, you have to put a dollar figure around how long things take. Just because Facebook is free and Instagram is free and LinkedIn is free doesn't mean that it's actually free, right? Your time to develop the campaign, to write the content, all of that kind of stuff. There's a time associated with that. You need to put some dollar figure around that. And then how are you going to measure success? And I'm going to give you two examples in a little bit about how we measure success uh, with two campaigns that I ran for clients. Um, so how could be uh, maybe we develop a website page uh, that only can be activated or can only be measured if a person went to it from a QR code on a direct mail campaign, or if it's a Facebook ad, maybe you're only having that Facebook go directly to that um, to that page on your website so that we can identify, okay, well, you had 30 hits on this website and then, you know, 15 people who hit it filled out your form. It's pretty good, right? That's 50% conversion. Um, so again, knowing how you're going to measure that success um, and, you know, direct mail, everything should have a way to measure it. And if you I would challenge you to bring something to me that I can't figure out a way to measure it, right? Even billboards and traditional marketing like advertising in magazines, there are ways to measure the success of that and whether or not people engage with that ad and convert them to potential leads for you. Um, uh, when it comes to direct mail, uh, QR codes are, are, are even more acceptable now than ever. So if you're not using QR codes and if you don't know how to do a QR code, uh, you can go to qrcodegenerator.com and they're free. You can download it, put it in your marketing. But you can also set, um, you know, again, creating uh, uh, digital information about this uh, that will tell you whether or not people are actually using the code and whether they're taking action on it. So so the how is how much it will cost and how are you going to measure success? So um, up until this point, if you've got any questions, you can you can throw them in the chat. I'm monitoring the chat, but I'm going to give you two examples before I leave you today um, of two actual who, what, when, where, what um, campaigns that were developed by clients. So you can kind of get a general idea of how this all comes together here at the end. So uh, this is for a home remodeler. 
Um, the what is he wanted to increase his kitchen backsplash pro back wow kitchen backsplash projects uh, by ten percent, and he wanted to target Viridian homeowners in some prairies. So right when you buy a Viridian home, a lot of times it's a very vanilla kind of um, painting and design, and so he wanted to target people that wanted to start to create some personalization in their home, and so doing a kitchen backsplash is a really great way to do that. Um, we're going to use an every door direct postcard campaign. And if you're, if you're in this line of work and you're on the call and you do business to consumer work, if you've never heard of every door direct, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one zoom call with me later. And you're trying to reach people in their homes. Let me know because it's a really low cost way to get in front of uh, consumers. Um, he wants a campaign to start August 15th and he wants some promotion to end October 15th. So that's when we're going to determine whether it was successful. Um, the how, remember, it's kind of a two-part. We're going to spend $250 on design, $500 on printing, and $115 on postage. So he has a total cost there. And then we're going to use a QR code that's going to go to a hidden web page with a lead form. And that's how we're going to measure it. So very specific goal. Um, at the end of that campaign, we're going to determine whether or not those efforts that we put ahead of time are actually creating leads for him. We're going to do it over the course of a pretty short time period. So he's not going to have to wait a year, right, to determine whether or not this was successful for him. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the, that's the campaign that we set up for this particular individual. Similarly, we've got a landscaping company here who wants to increase their web traffic uh, for specifically for snow removal, um, which currently is getting about 15 hits a month. They want to increase that to 80 hits a month. And they're going to target Oregon and Verona residents because they're already doing snow removal in those areas. And so their trucks that are lettered uh, are already in those areas. So they're kind of hoping to increase awareness and try to, to get more uh, info, more people to their website. Uh, we're going to do targeted Facebook ads and we're going to use some of the demographic information of clients that they already have. And we're going to do it specifically in the Oregon and Verona area using um, zip code radius right on Facebook there. And we're going to run the ad from August 1st to August 15th. So really only two weeks, we're going to run that ad and we're going to spend $50 per week on those ads. Um, and again, very low cost ad spend on this, but you know, we're tinkering here, right? We're going to see if this works. And then the how we're going to measure it is going to, we're going to use Google analytics and a call now button on the ad which will give us that information when we're looking at the campaign later in Facebook to know whether people clicked on that and actually called. Obviously, they can also say on the phone, how did you hear about us? And if they say a targeted Facebook ad, we'll be able to know. So we're actually having two opportunities here to be able to see web website traffic, three actually, website traffic, the lead form, and then also the call now button. So you'll see kind of as, you, as you're looking this over, this is very specific. It's very strong and it's very measurable marketing uh, ads that we've set up for these two individuals. Um, so that's my presentation today. Um, I hope you found it valuable. I wanted to also throw this out to you. I've had, so um, Marketing Momentum is um, a one-on-one -on -one marketing uh, program that I offer and it's, it's, it's designed for startups, small businesses, anyone really who is doing marketing for their business and really doesn't know whether or not they're getting good ROI, they're actually creating um, you know, leads by the marketing that they're doing. I'm going to try my best at request of some of my clients to take this four to five hour program and reduce it into a two and a half hour Zoom. Now, hopefully we're going to get through everything on the right here, this um, inventory of where they're marketing. We're going to create target audiences together. We're going to do industry differentiation. Um, and then we're going to create a craft, a 30 day campaign. And you're going to go into breakout rooms and you're going to share this with accountability partners that um, will help you maybe even answer some of the target audience blanks that you're like, I don't know how to reach these people. I just know that I want to reach these people. We're going to do it together. And I'm only gonna have 25 tickets. So we're gonna keep it short, small, sweet. Um, we've had a couple of people sign up already and I'm really excited about those who have signed up. Um, so if you're interested in it and you wanna um, scan the QR code, I'm I'm charging uh, $7.99, it's normally $1,000. And um, this early bird pricing is gonna end at the end of the, I think that's, that's next end of next week. 
Um, and you can get more information on the program um, by scanning your QR code or go to tingles.com slash events. But I hope you had fun today. Um, if you are still like, well, I still don't know how to set goals or I've set goals and I just want to run and buy tingles, you can scan this QR code and get on a 15 minute Zoom call with me and I can run through them um, with you and maybe help you strengthen them, maybe give you alternate ideas maybe you haven't thought of. Um, but I um, wanted to keep this really short in case anybody had any questions um, about today's presentation. Like I said, I will send you all a Zoom link that will, or not a Zoom link, a YouTube link of this presentation and also the slide deck if you want to go back and look at some of the notes of things that we've already talked about. But again, I'll be on the call here if anybody has any last minute questions, um, if you have anything you want to share or a key takeaway. I love knowing like pe what people were like, what? I didn't know that, that was supposed to go in a marketing goal or I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Um, but otherwise, thank you for coming. I hope you got value out of this and um, that's about it. So um, yeah, if, it's, if no one else has any questions, I will let you get back to your lunch. And um, have a great day, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye.